All right, super. So excited to see all of you all this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Excite, excited, super excited. I'm already fumbling. Excited to kickstart day one on stage three with our pillar of discussion, which is building a community-led content ecosystem. This is Mansi, is a very founder of kickstartpress.com, a discovery platform for parents, and would love to know what you think of this session. So do get social with screenshots of your key takeaways. And tag me on Instagram. It's at mansi.zaveri, at Pepper Content, and of course, at Sairi Chahal, founder of Shiro's. Sairi, so excited to be chatting with you today. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. I'm so excited about the summer, and I think I'm really excited about the lineup. And uh, yeah, so here we are. It's a yeah, yeah. I was just chatting with the team at Pepper and saying that, okay, while we're in this session, the sessions are so interesting that how do we make sure that we're also listening to the other sessions and how do we not miss out, right? That's a good problem to have. Um, but sorry, uh, diving in because we we have a really um, tight timeline and we want to cover as much ground as possible, make it super actionable for all our listeners. Um, managing and streamlining a community-led content venture can be challenging. I'm doing it, you're doing it because it tends to develop on its own terms. It's a long-term game. Yeah. It can be complex. Uh, and monitoring the content and ensuring that all of our initiatives are expanding the platform in line with what, you know, in line with the community that we want to build, right? Um, so whether, and, and for all our guests today, we're going all our viewers today, we're going to be covering broad topics like monitoring large volumes of user generated content, driving conversions on a socially oriented platform, keeping content away from research um marketing saturate reaching marketing saturation and of course building a coherent content and sales team in a community-led venture um so sorry driving in straight to the first question um everybody thinks it's very very easy what are the challenges let's let's address that first right so i think uh the the biggest challenges come as you grow because clearly and i think we've, we've seen it uh you know with platforms as they grow uh there is only as much human uh, work you can put in, you know. And I think so as, as you build communities, two things become very, very important. Automating everything that is not human enough or that's, uh, that's simple, uh, simple enough for machines. And second is I think if you're a community and you, you stand for something, like at least in, in, in case of Shiro's, we know we stand for a safe space. We want to encourage a particular kind of discourse. We want to also make sure that it, it stays relevant, meaningful, non-spammy for a large number of people on the platform. That means that we need to do a lot of norm setting. And I think uh, the only way to scale a community-led content ecosystem is to do a lot of norm setting, which means everybody's a little soldier in the content army and you're really not employing these people. They're people who understand why it's important to keep the platforms you know, clean and spunky and relevant to, to why they were set up in the first place. And of course, I think today, especially with our scale, uh, there's a lot of uh, AI and machine learning we use to, to do a fair degree of uh, moderation. And that does help to, uh, to take away a lot of lot of the work that otherwise would have been very hard. So for example, we know every time there's a community, somebody's selling something on WhatsApp and there's a ugly WhatsApp link, which is not relevant to the conversation. So today we, we, we pretty much have automated all those you know, hygiene factors, but the norm setting is still owned by the users. Right, right. Um, and tell me, what are one of the most creative ways you have seen social platforms being used for conversations, oh, uh, tons of ways. So I conversions will... for conversions. Absolutely. So I want to take a particular case uh, on Shiro's new community called Aspiring Writers. Now, I think all of us think we have a book in us, and uh, we we all want to write, uh, but very few of us do. So this is a community of about 150,000 women who are saying, uh, "Hey, we all want to write," and they started doing peer. They started to come and write every. Day. So they took a community and they said every three o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to come and write and we're going to publish something. And they started peer critiquing and reviewing each other so much so that this carried on for a couple of months. And now, you know, like 500, 600, 100 of these women have books that are published and they they work with each other to carry, carry through uh, 
this this whole exercise so here is a classic example of a community coming together uh, and and sort of uh, you know putting putting this uh, putting this in place i think um, there are also um, uh, other ways to do this is one uh, the most most sort of scaled up ways trust building i mean we know it works when somebody's name carries trust and they say i endorse this or i i say this and i think uh, trust carriers are important in a community content ecosystem we've seen platforms like reddit really is it i mean reddit is reddit because you know uh, there there is a certain kind of veracity to the kind of uh, content that's been put out yes i think in every platform there will be a lot of riff raff uh, it's it's uh, it's part of the part of the you know ecosystem but also making sure that uh the platforms are uh are are filled with more high trust people than low trust people and i think that's that's a simple metric to say increase the number of people who are trustworthy who have social capital and and therefore their content becomes more verifiable right and how do you, what's the road map to getting there because that is then layered with a layer of monetization right which yeah. is the tough one Yeah. Uh, and and i'm i'm sure that there are lots of questions and when we actually put this out about the session we got a whole bunch of questions on monetizing communities and monetizing content led communities um so tell me how do you what's your road map to scale it to that trustworthy appeal and then of course layering it with monetization right so i'm going to use a gardening analogy here you know it's like um i think when when you're seeding a community or when you're seeding a content led community the first thing you see is you see what you want to grow more right so uh, do more of what you want to see in the future which means literally start by making five posts a day that you want to see multiply so the first five posts are seeds so you, they have to be good seeds you know so so good seeds on day one and come again tomorrow and what are the previous seeds and add more uh, good seeds so i think the first 100 days or 200 days of building a community is just sowing excellent seeds out there you know so your top quality content needs to come there because this is the content that will become follower content you know people will know what to do here and i think globally twitter did this really well and of course i think uh, there there are communities have, that have done this extremely well pinterest done, did this really well canva did this really well and uh, so we we really think that the first 100 days of norm setting seeding the right kind of content and then finding the early adopters of the same content to say hey this person is not only reading she's also producing because she has she has found herself to be at the same level of the seed you know more then you multiply the seeders you know first you get the seed then you get the seeders and uh, there you have a little cohort you already have a pilot and and you go from there right interesting um and of course uh, you know when we're talking of monetizing or when we're talking of communities there's a whole big conversation on what should small regional entrepreneurs who want to build community do the regional play has become exceedingly important yeah. so how are you managing that right so i think uh, the the hardest challenge for the community is to really again going back to the seed conversation to see who are you in this big picture what kind of tree are you going to be and what values do you stand for you know i think communities are nothing if they don't stand for something or if they don't imply a tacit value system and i think uh, once that is clear it doesn't matter because then you know what what are you going to anchor yourself to and then i think um, i know there there is a whole conversation around around communities and you know growing regional communities i think communities are not audiences you know so the historical conversation on the internet was traffic and dauma and you know audiences and all of that i think we have to really step away and understand communities mean one they centers of trust you know and second is communities also mean that uh, this is the most specific place to do a very specific task it could be writing it could be digital moms it could be uh, food it could be uh, it could be legal it could be health it could be anything it could be careers and i think uh, that veracity is very core to building a community and i think there is an opportunity for everyone to build a community in fact internet would be cleaner happier 
more versatile if people build more communities and less of traffic. Right, right. Um, and for anyone who's who's looking at um, building regional content, if you were to share with the building regional communities, what would your top three go tos be for them? Well, I think first is of course no know your audience right what does the community want to stand for it could be something as simple as you know local local environment is environmentalism or it could be a uh, work or it could be uh, around a certain profession or it could be a certain interest area i think that hook is central to building a community second is of course uh starting with good seats so i think that's the hardest part and uh, since there's no benchmark early on a lot of people assume the early days are going to be easy and anything goes actually it's the other way around the early days are the hardest uh, and and uh, and third is i think um, uh, really uh, building a lot of authenticity you know communities work because they're authentic uh, they are not in the business of selling ads to people on day one they are they are all about respecting people's time. They are about respecting people's attention. Uh, and I think the principles of building a community remain the same. The great thing about regional communities is they're far more sticky. They're far more uh, honest. They're far more grounded. And and they're less spoiled. They're less corrupted by uh, you know the internet norms. So I think there is a massive, massive opportunity in building regional communities, sub-communities, uh, local communities of interest. And uh, yeah, like like if somebody was to build a community of cyclists in the Himalayas, I think it would be a really authentic, nice community or about, uh, you know, uh, people who go rafting every June. I think these are sort of like really fun communities to build because they're really, really honest in what their purpose is. Right. And how does one go about building that when there are larger players in the segment where these communities already exist. So how have you managed to keep these communities active? I think what largest play, large players can't do is go deep. You know, a large player will always operate at the surface. And, and that's where local communities, small communities, niche communities, verticals really work because you can go as deep. And because so in, in in what I mean to say is that example like you mentioned about rafting in every June, if there is a community and, and like in Kitstop Press we have let's say a baby led, led weaning community on Facebook, how is it that you can still attract people to your your platform versus pulling them out of a platform where they're actually spending a lot of time? Right. So and I you're causing it's it's habit habit changing behavior, right? Which is tougher. Right. So I think. Uh, as a community builder, I always feel that don't worry what platform you sit on. In fact, uh, on day one, don't don't pull your users outside of a large platform. Don't take them outside of the, you know, uh, if they want to stay on Facebook, they want to stay on WhatsApp, they want to be on Discord or wherever. I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome to actually build a community elsewhere and then pluck it out. Once you've seeded it, you know, purpose is established, you have you have stickiness, you have a lot of reason uh, to do this. Uh, like I, I know a particular community of this gentleman who actually built it on WhatsApp. It's a, a community of road trippers. They were a WhatsApp community for a long time and they, they kept exchanging notes about you know traveling all around the country. And today they actually have an app. They have an app and it's become like the navigation app for anybody road tripping from you know north to south and vice versa. So I think doing more of that uh, is really, so don't fight the big guns. Uh, at their advantage point, you know, your your advantage point is your your ability to go deeper in a segment that, a, you know, a big platform will never be able to build. Build more trust. Look, trust is the hardest thing to build for a large company. So the, yeah. anybody building a community should really make all their investment. They should park all their bucks in building trust and then it'll grow from there because trust is, is the fertilizer, right? It, it sort of has disproportionate returns. Sure. Then um, the next question we have is how to align the content efforts of various teams, like your sales, your product, to bring in that sort of brand synergy that we're all talking the same language? Well, I think the easiest way to do this is to put them in front of your users. You know, if we all know who our users are, uh, then you know who you're building for. Because I think this is not a step that uh, that works in retrospect. It doesn't work in passively. By the time your sales team or your product team or somebody else is 
is getting like a third hand information or their access is very inorganic it means they that they've already sort of lost uh, a little bit of freshness of knowing who they serve you know so dog fooding is the number one uh, formula for for making sure everybody is bought into the same uh, you know same vision and and i think nothing beats uh, community building or sort of getting everybody on the same page as the user themselves you know when uh, and and everybody needs to do it irrespective of who they are and how how big a designation they carry i think everybody in a community business actually all businesses need to sort of be in front of the front of your uh, uh, users but definitely as you as you build a content business everybody has to speak the same language right everybody has to use the same norms everybody has to get a sense of what is okay and what is not okay in this universe you know so so clearly uh, i think that that's something that uh, i have historically leaned on a lot and of course the other uh, other other thing that uh, i i believe as you sort of doing this is build your playbooks on day one you know like start documenting what has been put into the norms you know like i'll give you a small example we write sheroes as all caps okay and i mean if if you came into the community you know even our users do it now like we never tell our users but but the reason they do it is because it was put as the rule number 1 in the playbook they say always write in all caps and go from there right so yeah. i think start documenting and i think today you have a lot of nice collaborative tools between loom mm-hmm. notion and whatever else so so start sharing these cultural norms i think uh, i think communities are ritualistic you know it's like diwali there every home has a certain pattern right there some some homes yeah. make kai some make uh, rangoli whatever so you have to start putting those those little rituals in a playbook to say and hey, this and is what you do here while you say that uh, you know somebody has asked a very very interesting question which is in india a lot of people have been able to build communities but very few have been able to monetize it sustainably or profitably what do you think is the challenge and how can one address it right so two fundamental insights from building heroes one is i think uh, communities are a business of giving you know ultimately your core metric should be uh, what do people say when we are not in the room you know what do they say about this this little cohort they are part of like what is the vibe they walk out of right and and i know there is no excel sheet to measure it but i think one needs to still constantly sort of measure it second is uh so i'm i'm just going to interrupt uh, sai uh, sai there but what would your metrics of evaluation there be right so i'm coming to that so i think uh, one of the one of the things to monetize the communities is to measure the value your members take away from us so like at heroes we say hey when a woman comes to us we should be able to not only offer a safe space we should be able to offer her advice a peer network a place to hang out but she should also be able to find work uh, avenues around entrepreneurship and now access to credit so we say how much can we give to our user you know so communities are really about giving to your user and not about taking and the reason why monetization in communities has failed is because people are trying to juice out the they're trying to bring the principles of traffic the principle of, of audiences and the good old principles of spamming your user while they're reading an article and showing them way too many programmatic ads if you're going to monetize your community with programmatic and things that are disruptive to the, that that are destroying their experience you're already killing your own product okay so monetize communities in a way that that is positive net value add to the user and it can be in many ways it can be give me an example so uh, it can be services for example let's say your community about let's say cycling or running or yoga whatever right i think i would be more receptive to get get a service that helps me be a better cyclist or even if you start selling let's say like our shorts i'm i'm a more ready consumer for that product so clearly commerce is one way but what i would not like is random ads showing up in my face uh, while i'm trying to be on the community and i think all communities where this has happened have practically sort of you know become low trust so there are things that 
that are low trust and i think in your face advertising and non non verified advertising is one of the ways so i think uh, d2c is a great way when i say d2c if you have a community of a certain kind you know adding products of a certain measure metric trust standard really works you know i think that's one very clear way uh, in our case we have a very clear underlying principle that we are not in the business of selling to women we want to be always in the use case of giving to women so we said okay we we, we have built this large community women trusters so let's double down on that trust so that there is a lot more net net value add to the user and that that in turn is its own that's the network effect that every community wants to generate you know uh in in case of communities like canva they did it by saying hey we all are struggling to make nice creatives why don't you all talk to each other and like made a safe space for that to happen so i think plugged in saas d2c uh peer to peer commerce hey uh making the connects happen you know great communities can become great community marketplaces you know so and and we've seen that happen uh, many times platforms like poshmark have done it beautifully so i think the the idea is to really know who your community is and what they stand for and the channels come out between saas d2c community marketplaces subscriptions and now of course embedded embedded fintech finance i think there are a lot of opportunities to monetize communities i think the most important thing is measure trust measure net value add to your user and of course uh figure out what what really brings them to this community you know and if once once people get a sense that hey i am being sold to massively i'm being spammed out i think it's kind of like uh, then then you it's a downward spiral right that's very interesting that you say that because you know when you mentioned the whole uh, opportunities bit and also the d2c bit um is it important for communities to get valued to have an end product because if we are saying we're not using metrics like the conventional metrics of dao mao and and others how do you see communities being valued going forward or how would you value shiros at the moment right so actually we value it in terms of the value we generate to the to the woman we say okay you know how many women are getting jobs how many women are increasing their incomes how many women so for us over a period of time and it 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 really took like uh six seven years before it really came to that level where we can tangibly measure you know the amount of dollars we are putting in everyone's hands whether even if we we are doing it indirectly or directly but today that's a very clear metric for us how much money women can make off us you know irrespective of which which door they come in you know what what can we do better here but while that happened for us i think the most important thing was to make sure that the core didn't get destroyed the core kept growing and of course we did a lot of a uh, lot of experiments on monetization so not to say so for example uh, uh there are there and 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 i think what worked for shiros may not work for a lot of communities but there are channels for example co-created products is clearly like a like like a massive trend uh that that i'm seeing uh, everywhere else I think microservices is another trend. I think communities are best suited to become marketplaces as they sort of become bigger, as they sort of uh, uh, sort of grow into into uh, bigger beasts. And and then of course I think the dynamics change a little bit. But at heart, uh, the idea of a community uh, that can be monetized is that hey, fundamentally, are we continuing continuing to impart the value that we started with? you know so it may have been a facebook group but if it's an app today are people willing to pay us 10 bucks a month to keep this running i think it's it's as simple as that it's it's the net measure of value that can be extracted into something that that can be traded for dollars essentially uh, you know and of course i think it goes from there then. right it's it's very very interesting uh, that you say that and and two things and last two questions because we have exactly 4 minutes to go um while the while the advertisers marketers and all of us in many different ways are chasing gen z yeah your community is of course on on a much older audience so how are you keeping that relevant for your revenue stream as well actually uh i think the audience we work with is the spending audience right it's the right. audience that 
uh, controls the home budget, controls the children's budget, uh, is is pretty much like a equal decision maker in the home. Uh, I think our audience is sort of not so sexy. I mean, it's it's. I mean, I, if I may say, we are the auntie network, right? It's it's the auntie audience. But I think there is there is a massive opportunity to build for audiences that are underserved you know like i think there is there is a massive opportunity to build for example senior people you know i think they are massively under underserved in every which way both as communities and at the product level and insights level and i think uh, and and there's an opportunity to build practically for every cohort that you can think of you know it can be it can be sub communities it can be age wise demographics it can be geography wise and i mean it's it's really like a lot of room to play there but i do think i mean i mean just from where we see there were 200 million women who are between you know let's say 24 23 24 years of age to about 50 years of age in india who live in tier 2 india have a phone are educated and want more from life so so we really think that you know this woman is basically sri devi in english english you know yeah. she's invisible and and we say that hey can we be the person she trusts and sort of you know does a lot more with us so so we've been sort of saying let's build more depth and let's be slow to monetize. And I think the other thing about communities is they are slow to monetize. Uh, but when when they monetize them, they they have a very high retention rate and they have fantastic brand value. Right. Um, would love to have asked you more questions and pick your brains on this conversation. But of course, uh, I'm also given the job of being the timekeeper. So over to you, Yash. I think we're done from our end. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sairi, great chatting with you. Likewise.